We are back with our next section. I am Dr. Tullis and we are looking at the acid-base properties of salts. We need to examine the way that dissolved salts can affect the pH. Salts are ionic compounds and we assume 100% dissociation in water of ionic compounds because they are strong electrolytes. Here's a table that's going to be extremely helpful for us. Anions like chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrates, and perchlorate, and cations like lithium, sodium, potassium, calcium, and barium all have no reaction in an aqueous solution. Now, there are many that make the solution more basic, and there are several that make the solution more acidic. So we will be referring to this for the next several examples. Looking at anions that are conjugate bases of strong acids. For example, we know a strong acid is hydrochloric acid. So the conjugate base of the strong acid, hydrochloric acid, is chloride. Or nitric acid is a strong acid. So the conjugate base of this strong acid is NO3 minus. Let's go back and look at chloride and NO3 minus. Notice that chloride and NO3 minus, so chloride and nitrate, have no reaction to the solution, so they keep it neutral. These species are such weak bases, they will have no effect on the solution pH. So those were the anions. Let's look at alkali metal and alkaline earth cations. They also have no measurable effect on solution pH. Sodium dissolved in that water is going to have no reaction. Since these cations are conjugate acids of strong bases, hydrolysis does not occur. Let's say that I have an anion like carbonate. That's the conjugate base of a weak acid. So I have carbonate in water. Carbonate is a base, so it's going to be a proton acceptor. One of those hydrogens is going to donate an H to CO3, giving me HCO3 minus and hydroxide. So one of my products here is hydroxide. Hydroxide ions are produced via hydrolysis. Let's go back and look at CO3 minus 2. Notice it's right here. It's going to make the solution more basic, which makes sense. Hydroxide being produced is going to make it more basic, and it will raise the pH of the solution. Remember, if I raise the pH of the solution, I'm getting greater numbers. A pH of 14 is a lot more basic than if I were to say the lower pH, like 1s, 2s, 3s, lowering the pH makes it more acidic. Basic cations are the conjugate bases of acidic cations. Acidic cations fall into two categories. They can be metal cations with a plus 2 or a plus 3 charge and ammonium ions and their organic derivatives. All metal cations are hydrated in water, so it would be in a form like the metal cation in water like this. Let's go back and look at that chart. Here it shows us this aluminum and hydrated transition metals such as iron and we also have ammonium added in there. We see those, it's going to make the solution more acidic. Here I have my hydrated aluminum cation in water and it's going to donate, it's going to act acidic, donating a proton to my water, giving me H3O plus, and I could look this up in the chart and it finds a Ka value for it, again, making it more acidic. One of my products is hydronium, making it more acidic. Pause the video here and see if you can decide whether each of the following will give rise to an acidic, a basic, or a neutral solution in water. Let's look at what you got. If I looked up Na and NO3 in my chart, both Na plus and NO3 minus will give me a neutral solution, so a pH of 7. If I looked up for K3PO4, potassium phosphate, my K plus says that it will remain neutral, but the PO4 3 minus will give me a basic solution, so a pH of greater than 7. My iron 2 chloride, that iron 2 will make it more acidic, and that chlorine is neutral, so my pH will be less than 7. My sodium bicarbonate, Sodium says it's neutral. Bicarbonate says it will make it basic, so the pH will be greater than 7. Now the ammonium fluoride is interesting. Let's look at that. Ammonium down here says it will make the solution more acidic, and fluoride says it will make it more basic. How do we decide what's going to happen? Well, if we look at our Ka and our Kb values for ammonium, our Ka value 
is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And our KB value was 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11. This 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10 is slightly bigger, so it will be slightly stronger. So that KA, which is our acid strength, is going to overpower that base slightly. So we should be slightly acidic. See if you can look up these salts and predict whether the pH will be greater than, less than, or equal to 7. Hopefully you found that K plus and Br minus were both neutral, so we would have a pH of 7. NH4 plus would make it acidic. NO3 was neutral, so therefore the acidic wins. It would be less than 7. Aluminum chloride. The aluminum is going to make it acidic. The chloride was neutral. And our Na2HPO4, let's go back to look at that one. Here is our Na, so it's going to remain neutral. And our HPO4 2 minus is going to make it more basic. So therefore our pH should be greater than 7. Here's four more. Predict whether it will be neutral, acidic, or basic when adding these salts to water. Hopefully you got neutral for calcium chloride, acidic for the ammonium bromide, neutral for potassium nitrate, and basic for our last one. Take a minute to pause and look at our acid-base properties of salts summary. And let's do five practice problems. If I had a 0.1 molar aqueous solution of potassium carbonate, would it be acidic, basic, or neutral? Hopefully basic. Notice that K would have no effect, but the CO3 2 minus, the carbonate, would make it basic. How about this one? Ammonium bromide. My bromide would be neutral, but my ammonium is going to make it acidic. How about iron 3 chloride? Should make it acidic as well. How about potassium nitrate? That should be neutral. And the last one should be basic. In this next section, we're going to write equations for acid-base reactions and decide whether they're product or reactant favored at equilibrium. So according to Bronsted-Lowry, all acid-base reactions can be written as equilibria involving the acid and base and their conjugates. Hopefully you feel confident looking at the acid and the base and figuring out the conjugate base of the acid and the conjugate acid of the base. Let's look at this. We have HCl in water. We know that our strong acid is going to donate that hydrogen, leaving me with Cl minus. This acid on my left, its conjugate is going to be the Cl on the right, so its conjugate base is on the right. And then my water here is acting as the base, and so H3O plus is the conjugate acid. We know HCl is a strong acid. So because it is a strong acid, that means the other acid on the other side must be a weak acid. Now what about the bases? How do I know which one is the stronger base? Well, I don't see any hydroxides. The hydroxide would be a key that it's a strong base. But let's look at our Ka and Kb value chart to see who is stronger, H2O or the Cl minus. And notice when I look at my chart and I found Cl minus and H2O, this says very small and this actually has a value. And we know that as we go down, our strength increases. So H2O is the stronger base of the two. So I have a strong acid and a strong base. When I have a strong acid and a strong base, that means that our equilibrium is going to push in the direction of those weaker acids and bases. So all proton transfer reactions proceed from the stronger acid and base to the weaker acid and base. So the equilibrium lies to this side of the chemical reaction that has the weaker acid and base. Think of strong, it can push in that direction. So it will push to the right, which means that my equilibrium is going to be product favored to the right and my K value is greater than 1. What about when we have a weak acid? The products are a stronger conjugate acid and base. Here we have acetic acid. We know acetic acid is a weak acid because it's not a strong acid. But again, if you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure, let's compare our acetic acid 
to the conjugate acid that's on the other side. And in this case, it's H3O+. Let's go back to that Ka, Kb chart. Here's acetic acid with a value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And our hydronium ion right here has a Ka value of 1. 1 is greater than my 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So the hydronium ion is a stronger acid than the acetic acid. Notice here we wrote that the H3O plus is the stronger acid. Our acetic acid is a weak acid with a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. If I looked up water versus acetate, I would look at those two Kb values and I would see that my acetate is a stronger base. Therefore, when I have my stronger acid and stronger base on the right side, they're going to push the equilibrium to the left. So the equilibrium lies to the left. All proton transfers proceed from the stronger acid and base to the weaker acid and base. My stronger acid and base are on the right. They're going to push to the left where the weaker ones are. Pause the video here to see if you can figure out who the stronger acid and the stronger base belong to and the weaker base and the weaker acid. Hopefully looking at the values, you saw that the H3PO4 was the stronger acid compared to our acetic acid. And looking at our bases, that this was our stronger base. Knowing that, we're able to predict that we have a product favored reaction, so we will push our equilibrium to the right and we will have a K value greater than one. Pause the video here and write a balanced net ionic equation for the reaction that occurs between acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate. See if you can figure out the conjugate acid and conjugate base of that pair and decide whether the equilibrium will lie to the right or to the left. Here's my acetic acid and there's my sodium bicarbonate. I left my sodium behind because Na plus has no effect, but I left my bicarbonate, HCO3. My acid is going to be a proton donor, so my conjugate to my acetic acid is going to be the acetate, and then my bicarbonate, after it grabs an H, will become H2CO3. So this is my acid, this is my base, this is my conjugate acid, and this is my conjugate base. If I looked up the Ka and the Kb values for all of these, and comparing the Ka here, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, compared to this Ka, 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7, this is a greater number. This one is stronger acid. Now let's compare our Kbs. 2.4 times 10 to the negative 8, or 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. That's a much smaller number, so this is our stronger base. In that case, my equilibrium is going to lie to the right. It will be product favored. Pause the video here and see if you can answer A, B, and C. Hopefully you got that the stronger acid, looking at those Ka values, NH4 is a stronger acid. And remember, if I have a stronger acid, it has a weaker conjugate base. So the weaker acid would have a stronger conjugate base. In this case, we are reactant favored because my reactants are weaker acids and bases. We just need to compare the Ka and the Kb values. This would also be a reactant favored reaction because our reactants have smaller Ka and Kb values. So again, the reaction lies to the left. Pause the video here and see if you can solve this. We were told that HF is a strong acid. If this is a strong acid, we are going to push to the right. Pause here. Equilibrium will lie to the left because we're told H2S is a stronger acid, so it's going to push left. What about this one? it will push to the right because HCl, hydrochloric acid, is a strong acid, so it will push to the right. Last one. This will push to the left because HF is greater than NH4 if I look at those values. And so because this is the stronger of the two, 
it's going to push left.